ಸಂಕೀರ್ತನಕೀರ್ತನಕೀರ್ತನಕೀರ್ತನಕೀರ್ತನಕೀರ್ತನಕೀರ್ತನಕೀರ್ತನಕೀರ್ತನಕೀರ
मां द्रष्टु में हारहते अभिपक्व कषायाणा दुर्दर्शो हम कुयोगिना हंतस्मिन जन्मनि भवान मामाम दृष्टो में हारहते अभिपक्व कषायाणा दुर्दर्शो हम कुयोगिना दुर्दर्शो हम कुयोगिना हंतास्म जन्म निभवान मां दृष्टु में हारहते अभिपक्व कषायाणा दुर्दर्शो हम हरी ट्रांसलेशन वह माइक हरी कृष्ण ट्रांसलेशन ओ नारदा आई रिग्रेट दैट ड्यूरिंग दिस लाइफ टाइम यू ओ नारदा ब्रैकेट ओके सॉरी ओ नारदा द लॉर्ड सेड आई रिग्रेट दैट ड्यूरिंग दिस लाइफ टाइम यू विल नॉट बी एबल टू सी मी एनी मोर दोज हु आर हु आर इनकम्प्लीट इन सर्विस एंड हु आर नॉट कम्प्लीटली फ्री फ्रॉम ऑल मटेरियल टेंस कैन हार्डली सी मी द पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ गॉड हेड इज डिस्क्राइब इन द भगवद गीता as the most pure the supreme and absolute truth there is no trace of tinge of a tinge of materiality in his person and thus one who has the slightest tinge of material affection cannot approach him the beginning of devotional service starts from the point when one is freed from at least two forms of material modes namely the mode of passion and the mode of ignorance then one is in the remaining mode of nature goodness then one is in the remaining mode of nature goodness the result is exhibited by the signs of being freed from kama and lobha kama what is kama lust hmm. kama lust and lobha uh, co- covetousness 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 that is to say one must be freed from the desire for sense sense satisfaction and avarice uh, uh, avarice for sense gratification and to be completely freed from all material tinges is to become freed fr- free from the modes of uh, goodness also to search the audience of god in lonely forest is considered to be in the mode of goodness one can go out into the forest to attain spiritual perfection but that does not mean that one can see the lord personally there one must be completely freed from all material attachment and to and be situated on the plane of transcendence which alone will help the devotee get in personal touch with the personality of godhead the best method is that one should live at the play, at a place where the transcendental form of lord is worship the temple of the lord is a transcendental place whereas the forest is materially good habitation a neophyte devotee is always recommended to worship the deity of the lord archanam rather than go into the forest to search out the lord devotional service begins from the process of archana process of archana which is better than going out in the forest in his present life which is completely freed from all material hankerings shri narad muni goes does not go into for, into the forest although he can turn every place into vaikuntha by his presence only he travels from one planet to another to convert men god gods kinnaras gandharvas rishis munis and all others to become devotees of the lord by his activities he has engaged many devotees like prahlad maharaj dhruva maharaj and many others in transcendental service of the lord a pure devotee of the lord uh, therefore follows in the footsteps of the great devotees like narada and prahlad uh, and engages his whole time in glorifying the lord by the process of kirtanam such a preaching process is transcendental to all material qualities yeah. so in essence shri prabhupada is saying that the supreme lord is uh, pure 
and uh, the conditioned souls in this world if they have a uh, material tinge um, which arises from rajaguna and tamaguna and due to that they are not able to see the lord <laughs> lust and uh, greed <laughs> like that he say <laughs> and uh, uh, and then he says that if one is uh, situated in goodness <laughs> satoguna um, then from there one can develop oneself and grow further how two things he says you don't have to go to forest which is in goodness uh, but may have an altar at home and then worship the lord faithfully sincerely and uh, and also not just worship the lord and be happy yourself go out and preach like narada muni mm-hmm. distributing the same message to others the combination of these two things uh, worshiping the deity and chanting the holy name and going out and preaching and uh, distributing the krishna consciousness to compassionately to the suffering souls and these two things will take care that once material tinge is cleaned off uh, for a period of time and then one will get the vision to see the lord mm-hmm. so prior to this i want to show you another verse see this is not the boy the forest speaking read this ah uh, read that i read it i desired i desired to see again the transcendental form of the lord but despite my attempts to concentrate upon the heart with eagerness to view the form again i could not see him any more and thus dissatisfied i was very much aggrieved for but there is no mechanical process to see the form of the lord it completely depends on the causeless mercy of the lord we cannot demand the lord to be present before our vision just as we cannot demand the sun to rise whenever we like the sun rises out of his own accord so also lord is like pleased like gajendra says that isn't it nama atma pradipaya sakshine nama atma pradipaya sakshine paramatmane namo giram viduraya manasas cheta samapi same meaning ha huh? atma pradip san one self effulgent Nama Atma Pradipaya Sakshine Paramatmane, you are the Sakshi in the heart of all the living beings. And like the sun doesn't require a torch light or a hurricane lamp to see. You know, sun uh, can be seen by whose light? Sunlight only. That's why it's called Atma Pradip. He presents himself with his own light and he can be seen only by his own light only. You cannot see Krishna by any other method, mechanical method or anything. You can only see by his mercy. He's saying, and manasas chet sampi one cannot capture krishna by the mind Im- imaginations of our mind one cannot uh, capture krishna by words uh, these are all uh, unable to approach him he is pure transcendental divine huh? when he is pleased he manifests himself tsh, like this in the heart of the devotee huh? when you create a favorable environment for example when you uh, when you have an inflammable correct na huh? uh, like uh, petrol or kerosene or something like that kept in a bottle or something you put one match stick there it immediately comes up correct na mm-hmm. so the match stick matches with the inflammable and it uh, manifests similarly when uh, favorable climate is created by the devotee in his heart then lord manifests himself no mm-hmm. by his own will yeah go ahead the sun rises out of his own accord so also the lord is pleased to be present out of his causeless mercy one should simply await the opportune moment and go on discharging his prescribed duty in devotional service of the lord narad muni thought that the lord could be seen again by the same mechanical process which was successful in the first attempt in spite of his utmost endeavor he could not make the second attempt successful uh, his first attempt was he came to the forest uh, after his mother passed away and then he took a bath in the river and uh, drank water and then he sat under a large banyan tree in meditative posture and then he sat erect with his spine erect and hands straight and he closed his eyes and chanted the holy name and remembered uh, lord vishnu as taught by bhakti vedanta as before mm-hmm. and as he was doing that suddenly lord vishnu appeared in front of him <laughs> what he saw in the heart uh, lord manifested for a few moments and then lord vanished after that mm-hmm. 
and this song was so enchanting to the heart of this Narada boy. The Lord appeared uh, in his bluish form, with blue, four bluish arms with uh, uh, golden mukut and uh, you know makarakundal, uh, glittering and shining on his cheeks, and uh, with Vijayanti Mala garland and Kasturi Mani jewel and all the armlets and bracelets. And he had uh, tenderly and delicately formed a Shamala Mega Shamala Komalango, it is said, like that. And then he saw the Pitambara of the Lord. So, Lord's uh, soothing and enchanting. Uh, spiritual beauty mm-hmm. and that was seen by him for a few moments and then Lord vanished after that. So he thought that, okay, I am very close to meeting the Lord and talking to him continuously, he thought. Again, I will do it. Again, he sat in the same way, st- sat erect and uh, kept his hand and started thinking, chanting and all. But second time, Lord did not appear, he says. Huh? It was uh, not successful in the second attempt. Go ahead. The Lord is Lord is completely independent of all obligations. He can simply be bound up by the tie of unalloyed devotion. devotion. Nor is he visible or perceivable by our material senses. When he pleases, being satisfied with the sincere attempt of devotional service by one depending completely on the mercy of the Lord, then he may be seen out of his own accord. Mm. He may be seen out of his own accord. When he wishes, for example, imagine a school boy in 7th or 8th standard wanted to meet the principal. Huh? And he told the teacher, Madam, can you please take me to the principal's room? I want to tell him something. He said, hey. She said, hey, what? You will tell something to the principal? Hmm? You cannot go. He's a busy man. Huh? It's a big school with uh, 4,000 children and there are 200 teachers. Hmm? And principal is a super busy man. Not just any child can barge into his room. But then the same boy, when he came to 10th standard, he became state first. Then the same madam called him, hey, principal is calling you, come. So then he was taken to the principal's room, now he could easily see him. Because when principal wants to see him, he can see him. But when a boy wants to see principal, can he see? He cannot. Similarly, when the jiva wants to uh, see the Lord, he says, hey, Lord, come here, I want to see you now. No, he cannot see. But when Lord becomes pleased with your devotion service, then the Lord says, hey, who is this fellow doing such? Like Dhruva is doing some devotion service in the forest. Huh? Lord Vishnu comes flying in his Garuda carrier. Huh? So I am flying to the forest to see who is that boy who is so intensely practicing my devotion service. So Lord came to see him. Correct, no? And that is very natural. So therefore, Srila Bhaktan Thakur said, don't try to see God. Huh? Try to serve him in such a way that God wants to see you. He said, that's the meaning of that. Hmm? That's what here also is saying, Lord will want to see you. So his mechanical attempts to see the Lord were not very uh, useful. There was one day, uh, there was one devotee in those days, uh, in his village there was a community of, you know, three, two, three hundred devotees were there. He was one member of the community, but one of the senior fellows, uh, Grihastha. So he used to conduct classes for the people and many used to attend. and. Uh, mm-hmm. So, he would bring the people for morning chanting. So, he would tell them, if you doze in the chanting, you have to pay 50 rupees fine. <laughs> for one dozing, 50 rupees. Second time you are found to be dozing, then another 50 rupees. You have to pay like that. So, in this way, he, if somebody doesn't finish the morning program, <clears throat> I mean chanting in the morning and they are keeping it for the evening, they have to pay 100 rupees. So, something like that he would keep fine. So, and his uh, plan was, he, he told them in one lecture that in the whole chanting process, a very, very easy process, I have found out a method, you just have to keep your spine, spine straight, keep your hands straight, and you should not close your eyes fully, you should only uh, close your eyes, semi close only, and then if you look at the nose, he said, 100% guaranteed result, <laughs> you know, you have to get concentration. Yeah, wherever Krishna may be in which he has to come running in front of him because you have such a perfect procedure huh? he has to get you know in your vision so later on somehow this recording of his talk went to some senior and then the senior caught him hey what are you talking yeah, you think you can oblige Krishna you know Lord is not obliged like the demigods may be obliged huh? The demigods actually, you perform a certain puja, they have, wherever they are, they have to come and give you the boon. Huh? They are obliged, but Lord is never obliged. Lord is called Swarat. Huh? Swarat means he is totally 
independent because the only relationship that krishna possesses with his devotees is one of love huh? so other than love nothing short of love can make the lord come running huh? and in love also there is freedom correct no love love is voluntary so you voluntarily love him and develop a desire to serve him he voluntarily comes forward to reciprocate with you huh? but you there is no mechanical process by which you can oblige the lord huh? to come in front of you you can't make demands to him uh, like that so uh i i came across one real story of one boy which which was very thrilling to hear this boy when he was a small boy he was born in a slum so he was selling that you know he was living in a slum which is made up of jopri patti you know that jopri patti type of like radhara vi slum we have like that he was living in one slum there were about 50 to 100 people living with thatched kind of uh, steel beaten up steel huh? thatched uh, houses like that and outside there would be a, a lane type of thing where gutter would be flowing there will be many plenty of dogs howling lot of mosquitoes also there that's where he was born the small boy so he had a group of boys you know five six boys friends uh, and they would be playing this what do you call this huh? crunchy crunchy marble ah, marble marble yeah they would be playing marble you know they would be spending time in playing marble in the evenings so one day they saw in the main road uh, harinam sankirtan was going huh? so he heard the sound of harinam sankirtan became attracted hmm. so he ran to that to see that and then he was very charmed huh? so then second time they came again he ran to watch it hmm. so then somebody gave him some prasad he accepted and he called his friends also come come you also take and they also took prasad they came back hmm. so these children were not going to school because they had no money and the parents also never bothered these children were growing up in age huh? but they had no education no engagement just hanging around uh, playing here and there like pulling leg sometimes fighting quarreling sometimes playing also they were doing like this so but he this boy became charmed he one day went with harinam sankirt and to the uh, local temple along with the harina and then uh, he entered the temple and he saw the beautiful deities of radha krishna and gavanata and they were offering obeisances he also offered obeisances huh? and then they were dancing in kirtan he also went and danced as a small boy huh? he was very charmed by the devotees mm-hmm. and in this way uh, uh, he saw that lot of uh, elite people highly educated people high society people they are all coming there mm-hmm. so he was feeling little out of place huh? you know i am allowed to come here they allowed me they didn't stop me i come from aslam uh, i am insignificant uh, i have insignificant parentage you know? uh, so he wouldn't talk to anybody he would just hang around take part in kirtan and go and he started going for darshan morning evening like that he started going uh, so as he grew up a couple of years some devotee noticed that this fellow is regularly coming uh, so they called him and uh, added him in the class uh, then he started attending the class and taking uh, prasad and then eventually he started going to a government aided school which was free education so he started taking some education so he passed up to some 10th standard or something like that so his education was going on he was the only boy from the slum who would go for education and go to the temple other boys were just loitering drinking chai playing games <laughs> this kind of time they were spending and they were just growing and sometime they would take a bag Uh, uh, goni and then go here and there and collect some beaten up bottles uh, and give it and get some money mm-hmm. they were doing things like that yeah. and they would go and beg also sometimes from people somebody is coming in a car they would go and beg but this fellow called his friends not many of them were willing to come but he somehow went to the temple so he he made it a point that i should regularly go to temple so in the classes he learned that uh, krishna can be attained very easily if you make a uh regular worship of krishna at home just like i read just now you don't have to go to forest you stay at home and you make an altar of krishna so he came home and made a beautiful altar for the lord he put a purchased a big picture and put it and then he you know they had some place where they grew some jandu he collected them and made a garland and put for the lord he got some agarbatti started showing every morning reverentially he would uh, get up and take a bath and he would make the altar and make the garland and put for the lord offer obeisances and he started chanting the holy name 
the entire slum area there he was the only fellow who would rise so early in the morning <laughs> and do all these activities some days he will go to the temple and spend time in the morning hmm? in this way he grew up and eventually he uh, came across uh, uh, when he completed his 10th standard he didn't have money to study further huh? so he thought let me do some business so he then found out uh, some pandalwala gave him a job huh? you know because in the temple uh, we every year invite pandalwala for the, this thing no for the janmashtami big pandal we make huh? there he went and offered help so pandalwala said who are you come here can you join now he said okay i can join so he joined him job so he started giving him some salary also so he was not just taking salary and doing the work he also was observing and learning many things and the pandal uh, top fellow found that this boy is very serious and very intelligent so he just learned under him for 4 5 years and he grew up to such a degree that he could start his own pandal company huh? yeah he started his own pandal company and uh, in devotion service also he grew up to a point where he got initiated also he got first initiation he and his wife he got a devotee girl he got a devotee wife and now when he started the pandal company company is going on but he stopped wearing pant shirt completely mm-hmm. he would always wear only dhoti kurta mm-hmm. daily get up in the morning keep a short hair wear tilak anti mala bead bag always this was his vesh bush mm-hmm. he would keep like this all day and when he started pandal business also you know in the beginning he had to work hard for 6 8 hours and eventually he, he had to work only about 2 3 hours a day eh? and uh, he just has to go to a spot and do the preliminary work and then once he allots the work to different people in his team and they all will work and he had lot of time so he became connected to one senior brahmachari and uh, that brahmachari had like 150 200 people under him in a community and then he wanted some help so this fellow was a coordinator of program he would call the people and they would come and so only the brahmachari said i want you to become a counselor so they made this fellow into counselor also now he has 30 40 people under him he is a counselor also he became a counselor in the program now he is going for brahman diksha also now going to get brahman diksha and going to worship the deities now so he and his wife became serious devotees and very close to the temple they took a house you know in uh, the gagan onati huh? in nbcc and uh, here the house is like a 2 cr or 3 cr house hmm. is able to buy india three children also you know three son and daughter sons and daughters three of them now he brought his mother and father from the slum into the gagan onati can you imagine real onati it is is it huh? so now uh, his mother father they are in tears huh? they are saying he is such a cultured boy huh? we never lived such a in one life itself we saw such a promotion in him materially and spiritually both ways so recently when i uh, was appointing new counselors i had made a form two full pages form they have to fill up and i will meet the husband wife personally and ask them any questions why ba boss kind of thing so he had come for why ba boss that time he related to me and he was in tears he told me that prabhu my all my old circle people are still in slum he said they have not left the slum they are still unclean uh, they are uh, they are watching movie in the small mobile also they watch movie <laughs> even button mobile they can watch movie you seen that they are still watching movie in a button mobile uh, they are smoking they are drinking they are looting sometimes they are begging and collecting uh, living in the same chal uh, around surrounded by cats and dogs and everything they have not so materially those guys never improved and spiritually also they never improved isn't it whereas this fellow materially spiritually both from points of view he grew up in one life within a span of like 10 15 years huh? how he has grown up so one of the observations i made with this fellow that he is very sincere huh? and he has a very good attitude huh? and uh, most importantly i found that he you know he rises early in the morning and takes a bath and he just has a picture of narada radha krishna picture he puts it in gavane tai and then that nobody giving him an association you know, he just sits and after offering agarbatti and flower to the lord sits and chants the holy name he has faith in lord's words hmm? because you will see
Yeah. See, Lord Krishna says in Chaturishloki, first verse, I'll have to repeat. Aham sarvasya prabhavo, matta sarvam pravartate, iti matva bhajante maam, buddha bhava saman vitaha. Read the translation. Translation. I am the source of all spiritual and material worlds. Everything emanates from me. The wise who perfectly know this engage in my devotional service and worship me with all their hearts. So here he is saying, in the first line Krishna is saying, you know, I am the source of all the spiritual and material worlds. Uh, and matta sarvam pravartate. Not only I create the worlds, but inside the worlds also everything keeps manifesting. Like for example, the sun is giving heat and light. The wind is blowing, the rains are showering, crops are growing, you know, flowers are blossoming. Many, 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 many things keep coming. Not that it came once upon a time. Now also it keeps coming. Correct, no? From the Lord. Matta sarvam pravartate. And then iti matva, iti matva means jos ko mante hain. Jos who are convinced about this. What they do? Bhajante. They worship me. How? Bhava samanvita. Huh? He is saying with our wholehearted consciousness. So, because this, this boy, he had a firm faith that everything emanates from Krishna only. So, if you are not bringing our bhava to Krishna, see, you will only bring bhava to those things on which you have respect for. Like somebody says, <coughs> Prabhu, there was a, uh, you know, placement interview and my friend got placed in Microsoft and he will tell this to a hundred boys. My friend got placed in Microsoft. 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 <laughs> That means he has a lot of respect. Yeah, yeah. He's saying in Baba, <laughs> it's great because for him, Microsoft means you have two extra hands or something. Mm-hmm. Correct, no? Because that's where his heart is. You will speak and delight about things where your heart is resonating with. If you are convinced that everything, like Aham Sarvasya Prabhavaha, Prabhava means originate. Everything originates from Krishna. So your respect for Krishna will tremendously increase. But what you are thinking, Iskan ke log bolte hain ki Krishna se sab aata hai. <laughs> Iskan people say that everything comes from Krishna. <laughs> you think like that, you will never become a devotee. <laughs> you yourself are inside Iskan only. <laughs> and you are saying, Iskan people are saying like this. <laughs> so, if you have doubt, go. Go to the root. You should challenge your faith and bolster your faith by asking questions. <laughs> it is better that you argue Ask questions, go to Puranas, go to Vedas, go to Vedas, study very deeply and find out whether what this Khan is saying is true or not. It is better than, because otherwise superficially you nod the head and you say that, yes, uh, you know, I attend classes and everything, but if the knowledge is not sinking in our heart, you know, we are still lingering on a material platform. Machitamad gata prana. Bodhayanta parasparam, Kathayanta shamam nityam, Tushyan teacher, Raman teacher, The thoughts of my pure devotees dwell in me. Their lives are fully devoted to my service, and they derive great satisfaction and bliss from always enlightening one another and conversing about me. Yeah. So the thoughts of pure devotees dwell in me. Actually, all of us, we have our thoughts dwelling in something. Huh? Either it dwells in a sense gratification or it dwells in Krishna. It, it, it varies from person to person. Hmm? Hmm. Like you will see, uh, Prabhupada quotes the example of a dog. A dog is a lusty creature. He always chases after she-dogs. Huh? And a pig eats any damn thing, nasty thing like uh, a stool. Huh? So, these two creatures, Prabhupada often quotes the example of dogs and pigs. So, one who has a piggish consciousness eats any damn thing. One who has a doggish consciousness lusts, lusts after women of the world. So, people's minds dwell on these kind of things. Yasyatma buddhir kunape tridhatu ke swadhi kalatra dishubhauma ijjadi yatirta buddhis salile nakarhichit janeshwabhigyeshu sayeva gokaraha. So, in the 
Bhagavatam, it is said, Yasyatma Buddhi, one who identifies with this body made of Kapha Vata Pitta. Huh? But he is too proud of his body. Huh? It's my body. He looks in the mirror and he thinks, I am this, what I am seeing in the mirror. Huh? He decorates the body, puts all kinds of scent in the body, powder in the body, huh? all kinds of hairstyle. And so he is too much attached to his own body and also attached to the body of his wife and children and family members. They go for a tour. They go for entertainment here and there. But he says that, and he's attached to his uh, place of birth, his nation. Huh? So, such a person who is completely in a bodily consciousness, huh? such a person will be stooped in bodily consciousness. He doesn't feel any iota of devotion to the Lord. Such a person. He's called a Griha Medi, such a person. Opposite of that is Grihastha, like this man I was telling you. Actually, he, even before marriage, he would uh, every day morning get up. And he took the Lord's uh, presence very seriously in his house, lighting up a lamp for him, offering Agarpati for him, bowing to him. He did all the artis, Mangala Arati, Narsingha Arati, Tulsi Arati, and reading from Srimad Bhagavatam. You know, when he started making money from the business, the Pandal business, the first thing he did was to get a Bhagavatam set. Huh? And then well, daily, why I am reading Bhagavatam? Because Prabhupada says daily Nityam Bhagavata. Prabhupada says you should read Bhagavatam. Prabhupada says you should do Arati. Huh? And you would give a major chunk of his earning for donation. Why? Because Prabhupada says, you know, give 50% of your earning to Krishna service. That means he not only educated himself about the knowledge, he also started applying the knowledge you know, by taking it seriously. One should, Grinatastha Svacheshtitam, one should take the matter seriously. If you don't take the matter seriously, we don't grow at all. We remain stuck on a material plane. We don't uplift ourselves. You know? Therefore, Lord is saying here, the thoughts of my pure devotees dwell in me. How can the thoughts dwell unless you devote time for that? Correct, no? Hmm? You see, one time, one devotee wanted to make gulab jamun who had no experience of making gulab jamun huh? at all. Somehow he insisted, Prabhuji, today I will only make, I will only make. Somehow he made gulab jamun while frying it, became like a karak ball. You know? <laughs> Very hard. Some of them black, some of them brown black. It became like that. And many devotees were saying that, Prabhu, when you put it in the mouth, you are not able to bite with our teeth. It is so hard, it is not breaking at all. Huh? Then one devotee showed, he took out one gulab jamun, kept on him, brought a hammer. Huh? Hard part, he hit. When he hit with the hammer, it broke into two. Then I saw inside, inside was white, white. It was like uncooked floor. Correct, no? It was like uncooked floor. And the outside little looks blackish and red, you know, brownish. But inside it is... Kacha, kacha ata is there, kacha ata like that. So that is why there was a lot of complaint. Devotees are saying that Prabhu, you know, this gulab jamun has no juice also and it is very hard also. And our teeth are paining. We will have to have many doctors lining up to dentists <laughs> after eating this. But ideally speaking, how gulab jamun is supposed to be? Supposed to be soft like a rubber, huh? soft ball. It. And it is also soaked in the liquid. And then when you squeeze it, no, liquid should come out, correct, no? And then when you put it in the mouth, delicious it is, correct? So similarly, how is our heart in Krishna consciousness? Our heart in, like for example, I may live in a center like this, but I can be like that Karak Bal Gulab Jamun. Huh? What is that? All around me, syrup is there. What is the syrup? Syrup of Krishna consciousness. Yeah, the altar is there. Aartis are going on in the morning. Classes are going on. Prasadam is served. You also wear tila, kantimala, dress, everything. Huh? Everything is there. Only heart is like a karak ball. You know, it is not ready to uh, absorb the association. Huh? It is like karak ball. You break it with a hammer, then you see it's all uh, ata, kachar. Huh? Like that. So, therefore, one feels, oh, Prabhuji, this process is very mechanical. It's boring. Huh? Every day the same thing. You dance, and you have to do arati. Huh? You know, you ask if your boy has a girlfriend in the college, does he say, every day I have to look at her, every day I have to talk to her. Prabhuji, it's boring, Prabhuji. You know, will anybody say like that? Huh? He will go mad. He'll be like wagging his tail like a dog, huh? going behind there, madam, 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 he'll be going. Huh? She will say, come here, take me to canteen, purchase this, huh? get me that. She will order him and he will also salute and work, correct, no? You can see that any lusty dog, I mean, lusty, any lusty boy, correct, no? He will do that, correct, no? How many of you have seen that? Correct, you see that. So, does he ever get bored with that, tell me? And that is why Rupa Goswami gives the example. 
He says, Yuvati naam eta yuni, you know yuvatav yata. He is saying, Manobi namate tadvan. He is saying, my dear Lord, <coughs> just as a young boy is attracted to a young girl, and a young girl is attracted to a young boy, may my attraction for you be in a similar manner. Let me become attached to you. Like you, you will see, See here uh, in the Gopi Gita, I'm saying it's a beautiful song. Virachita bhayam prashni dhuryate Boliye? Virachita bhayam prashni dhuryate Taranami yusham Samsrathir bhaya Karanami yusha So they are saying, see those who, oh, best of the Vishnis, your lotus like hand which holds the hand of the goddess of fortune grants Abhaya Pradhan, fearlessness to those who approach your feet out of fear of material existence. That means devotees approach Krishna's feet and Lord shows the hand like this and makes them free from fear. Please place that wishful fulfilling lotus hand on our heads. So you can, you can understand how much they are uh, appreciating every limb of Krishna's body. The hands are uh, giving vardhan, benedictions. Similarly about the feet also they are saying in another uh, verse. Pranata dehena papa karsana Pranata dehena papa karsana Pranachara nugam Shri Niketanam Pitam te padam bujam Pane padam te padam bujam Krana koche shonaha Randi hrachayam Krana koche shonaha Yadrada Tarayan Pasu Nalina Sundaram Nata Te Padam Sela Kranam Kure Seda Te Naha Kalila Kamanaha so they are saying, My dear Krishna, your lotus feet are so holy that hmm, it shatters the mountain of uh, sinful reactions which are, which are like a baggage in the life of a devotee. Aham tvam sarva pape bhyo. So your lotus feet shatters, because your lotus feet has a vajra. Huh? 
with that you shatter the sinful reactions of your devotees. Huh? Not only that, they are saying that your lotus feet are always uh, following the in the footsteps of the cows, which are following in the footsteps of grasses. Trinachara anugam shini ketanam. Although you are shini ketan, you are uh, husband of the uh, goddess of fortune. Hmm? You have no need to go as a covered boy. Hmm? But as a pastime, uh, just like sometimes a uh, prime minister of a country may take a hose pipe and he may, you know, do some watering in the garden. He is not employed nor is he paid salary also. Hmm? He just uh, does it for fun. Hmm? Similarly, you are, you are for you going uh, for herding cows is only for fun, playing games with your friend. Huh? Trinacharanugam Shini Ketanam. Hmm? You have thousands of Lakshmis to serve you, but you leave them behind and you go to the forest herding the cows huh? to perform your leela. And funny Fanarpitam. And you offered the same dust of your lotus feet to the Kalyanaga, huh? who has thousand hoods. Kanta Kamadam. Funny Fanarpitam. Uh, te padam bujam. Huh? Yeah, your, your lotus feet are tender, but you danced on the hoods of the hard hearted Kalya and gave him your mercy because his wives were your pure devotees. Huh? And then they are, in this way, they are saying that your lotus feet are divine, your hands are divine, your eyes are like a, a lotus gland. So, Prabhupada says here in the Krishna book, you will see. See, this is a. Gopi is attracted by Krishna's flute. Please read this. Wonderful. So, the first one, uh, Krishna was very. Hare Krishna. Krishna was very pleased with the atmosphere of the forest where flowers bloomed and bees and drones hummed very jubilantly, while the birds, trees, and branches were all looking very happy. Krishna tending the cows, accompanied by Sri Balaram and the cowherd boys, began to vibrate his transcendental flute. After hearing the vibration of the flute of Krishna, the gopis in Vrindavan remembered him and began to talk amongst themselves about how nicely Krishna was playing his flute. When the gopis were describing the sweet vibrations of Krishna's flute, they also remembered their pastimes with him. And then, Thus, and then we go read further, they remembered also. Yeah. They remembered also how Krishna dressed, decorated with peacock feather on his head. Just like a dancing actor and white uh, with blues, with blue flowers pushed over his ear. His garment glowed yellow gold and he was garlanded with Vajayanti necklace, dressed in uh, an attractive way. Krishna filled up dressed in such an attractive way. Dressed in such an attractive way. Krishna filled up the holes of uh, his holes of his flute with the nectar emanating from his lips. Yeah, so now he is going to the forest with his friends. So they are all remembering him entering the forest of Vindavan. Huh? And then Krishna was expertly playing the flute and Gopis were captivated by the sound vibration. So now different gopis, they are all sitting in circles now. Huh? And one one gopi is going to comment about uh, what Krishna is doing in the forest. Hmm? So one gopi is telling a friend, the highest perfection of the eyes is to see Krishna and Balram entering the forest and playing the flutes and tending the cows with their friends. The persons who are engaged in transcendental meditation of seeing Krishna internally and externally by thinking of him. Hmm? That means externally we are doing seva. Internally, we are thinking of Krishna. Hmm? Uh, hmm. Thinking of him playing the flute, entering the Vindavan forest, dancing. And they have really attained the perfection of Samadhi, Prabhupada is saying. Samadhi trance means absorption of all the activities of senses on a particular object. And that object for devotees is Krishna. So the gopis are doing Leela Svananam. Huh? Then another gopi is, uh, uh, yeah, another gopi is expressing our opinion. Oh, Krishna and Balram, they are looking like, just like actors going to play on a dramatic stage. Krishna is dressed in yellow garments, Balram in blue. And uh, they held the new twigs of mango, tree and peacock feathers and bunches of flowers in their hands. And dressed with garland of lotus flowers made by Ashoda. Huh? They are going. So, one, another gopi is telling here, how is it Krishna Balram looking so beautiful? My dear friend, we cannot even think of his bamboo flute. What sort of pious activities did it execute? So that it is now enjoying the nectar of the lips of Krishna. So, in this way, uh, see what I do generally, I write in the side, you saw that? Mm. I have written dancing actor. And then I have written, you know, flute pastimes of Krishna's lips must have executed pious activities. <laughs> like that I keep writing, you see, because of Krishna's. And then here you see the lakes and rivers are considered to be mothers of trees because the trees live simply by drinking 
What else? How is it that our son, bamboo rod, is enjoying the nectar of Krishna's lips? Like that the bamboo trees are thinking. Huh? And the banks of the rivers and lakes are also happy to see their descendant. So engaged in the service of just like sometimes parents and grandparents see their uh, boy, you know, wearing tilak and kantimala and wearing dhoti kurta, chanting, dancing in the gift and they feel very great joy. Huh? They're supposed to feel joy. Huh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. If they come in a good family, correct? Huh? Isn't it like that the bamboo family, they were feeling happy that our son is engaged. Just as persons who are advanced in knowledge take pressure to see the descendants engaged in the service of the Lord. Huh? Like that. Huh? So, uh, you know, one uh, there is a dialogue between the gopis and the flute. Huh? They are telling the flute, Hey flute, how is it that Krishna keeps you either tucked in his clothes huh? or when he is sleeping, sometimes he keeps the flute to the side and goes to sleep. Huh? And uh, when he goes to forest, he charms the whole world by playing on the flute. Huh? And uh, Krishna can never be separated from the flute, isn't it? Even when he was going to go to Mathura, he told his uh, mother Yashoda, Maya, ye murli ko sambal, sambal ka rakna, radha chori na kar de isko. Huh? I tell you, he says, huh? so the Radharani gopis will steal this. Huh? So, this is my great wealth, so keep it preserved, like that he says. The gopis are asking, Are you, you are such an insignificant uh, instrument. Huh? You know, at least we see Veena, it's a very majestic instrument, isn't it? But how is it that Krishna is so much attracted to you? And the flute also gives response back. Huh? The flute is saying, Hey gopis, don't be envious of me, huh? that Krishna is keeping me so intimate. You see, I am inside out hollow. Huh? If you can see through me, and I don't hide anything. I am non duplicitous devotee of the Lord. Huh? Not only that, you know, if you see the flute bamboo, you know, they have used a machine to make the hole. They make, no? So, I was ready to be made whole, huh? which means I was ready to undergo the austerities uh, of attaining Krishna's lotus feet. Huh? Because the austerities Krishna has accepted me. And I have nothing to hide from the Lord. You see, Veena, if you see, it is long like this, and here there's a big, uh, this kind of thing. We don't know what is inside. Huh? But I have nothing to hide. I am inside out, outside in, huh? like that. And not only that, you know, because I am born in a very simple family, huh? I, am, I have the simplicity. I have the simplicity, I have non duplicity, and I am ready to perform the austerity. Huh? Yeah. And not only that, I am separated from my parents. Huh? My parents are the bamboo trees uh, living with the side of the Yaman. I could have lived with them, but I am ready to be separated from them. And I am ready to go wherever Krishna wants to take me. Huh? I am simply sold out to Krishna. Therefore, uh, I have become very dear to him. Like the flute uh, tells the gopi. So they are having a dialogue like that. So, uh, here you see further, if you see, when uh, sometimes the gopis speak, that's our friends. Oh, dear friend, the Vindavan is proclaiming glories of the entire earth and, and the peacocks are dancing beautifully. So, the forest, the peacocks are dancing and welcoming Krishna and the cuckoos are cooing and welcoming Krishna. Huh? Mm. Another gopi is saying, hey, just see the deer. Although they are dumb animals, they have approached the son of Maharaj Nanda. Not only they are attracted by dress and dress of Krishna Balaram, but as soon as they hear the playing of the flute, the deer along with their husbands offer respectful obeisances to the Lord. The gopis are envious of the deer because uh, they were devotees of Krishna, but their husbands were not ready to become devotees. Huh? So they said the deers are more fortunate, they were saying. Huh? Another gopi is saying, even the wives of the denizens become attracted, they descend down along with their husbands in the plains. Huh? Either they are saying, and then they are talking about the cows. See, when the cows are hearing the flutes and what they do, their ears, like that it stands, huh? and they are drinking the nectar of Krishna's uh, flute without eating the grass which is in their mouth. Which is more dear for them? The grass in the mouth or the uh, fruit sound of Krishna? Mm. Similarly, the calves are drinking milk. See, cows are eating grass and calves are drinking milk from the mother. And both have stopped taking it because they are hearing the fruit sound of the Lord. Because two nectars, one nectar here, one nectar here. Huh? <laughs> this nectar is more powerful than this. So they are ready to hmm, wait till the fruit stops. When fruit stops, they will continue taking it. Birds, what are they doing? Who are looking at Krishna playing on the flute, they are sitting very attentively on the branches and the twigs of the different trees. From their features, it appears that they have forgotten everything and are engaged only in hearing Krishna's flute. This proves that they are not ordinary birds, they are great sages and devotees. 
Just to hear Krishna's flute, they have appeared in Vrindavan forest as birds. That means who are they? Uh, sages, uh, they are great uh, yogis. Huh? They are closing the eyes and sitting and listening to Krishna's flute. Huh? Yogis may be sitting like that, and birds are sitting in the branch. <laughs> they are also meditating on Krishna's flute like that. They are saying like that. Yeah. And even River Yamuna, uh, she is desirous to embrace lotus feet of Krishna after hearing the flute sound. She broke her fierce waves to flow very nicely with lotus flowers in her hands, just to present flowers to Mukunda with deep feeling, they are saying. Why Yamuna is fierce? Because she is a sister of Yamaraj. Huh? Yamaraj is fierce, he punishes the evil. Huh? So she is also fierce. She flows also very fiercely. But when she sees Krishna, Balrama cloud boy is running by the side of uh, Yamuna, the Yamuna Tiravana. Sorry, when she sees that, her nature changes. Huh? Fierce Yamuna becomes mild Yamuna, like that they are saying. Hmm. Similarly, people who may be very hard hearted, they become very mild natured when they become devotees. Hmm. And then scorching heat of the autumn sunshine it was sometimes intolerable. So clouds in the sky appear in sympathy above Krishna and Balram and their boyfriends. Mm -hmm. And uh, the clouds serve as a soothing umbrella over their heads. Not only that, they also sprinkle water, it's called drizzling. Huh? And also there were aborigine girls who were passing in the forest and they saw Krishna Balram, you know, walking along with the covered boys, going with the uh, dancing and singing and going along with the cows and calves. And from a distance, they had great respect also. Huh? So after Krishna passed away with his group, they went there and they found the leaves you know, in which Krishna's lotus dust feet and the lotus dust of his feet had fallen. So they took that, applied it on their heads and their breasts. The Prabhupada says here uh, that the, those women had big breasts and even though their husbands touched the breasts, still they were not satisfied. Huh? But when they took this dust of Krishna's lotus feet on their chest and head, they became completely relieved of lust. It has a very deep meaning. Actually, it is not only with the Abharajan woman, it is with every jiva who gets the dust of Krishna's lotus feet. If you apply it on your heart and your head, you will be become free from lust. So that means if somebody is still lusty, that means he has not yet tasted Krishna. He is still chasing after Maya in this world. Because these Abharajan women were not educated. Huh? They were simple mountain women. Mm. So in this way, sun sometimes becomes hot in Vrindavan, so that everybody's services increases. Huh? Like that. Mm. Yeah. See how fortunate is Govardhan than Hill for enjoying the association of Krishna Balram, who are accustomed to walk on it, mm. supplying different kinds of fruits, roots and herbs. So in this way, another gopi is cherishing the uh, benediction of uh, Govardhan and Hill. Huh? And then they are saying, when Krishna Balram played on the transcendental flutes, moving creatures become stunned, and then uh, non-moving creatures begin to shiver in ecstasy, like trees. Generally, trees are not very conscious like humans. But when they saw Krishna Balram coming, they were uh, trembling, huh, the trees, and they were putting their branch down to offer him flower and fruit. So Krishna told Balram, Baya, pick up, uh, pluck these uh, fruits and eat, and pick up these flowers and, and put it on your turban. Huh? So he said, see, the trees are eager to serve you. Actually, they want to serve Krishna. Mm -hmm. Krishna is telling Balram like that. Mm -hmm. So in this way, Krishna, Krishna appeared like a moon surrounded by stars huh? with all his, mm -hmm. like they are saying. Mm -hmm. See, Prabhupada is saying, read the last line, the gopis were not born in a very high Brahmana Kshatriya families. Read that. Underline. The gopis were not born in very high Brahman or Kshatriya families. They were born in the families of Vaishyas and not in big mercantile communities but in the families of covered men. They were not very well educated, although they heard all sorts of knowledge from the Brahmanas, the authorities of Vedic knowledge. The gopis' only purpose was to remain always absorbed in the thoughts of Krishna. Yeah, and at the top you will see, read that uh, uh, second line, gopis in the village. Gopis in the village were always absorbed in thinking of him and discussing his different pastimes. This is the perfect example of Krishna consciousness, to somehow or other remain always engrossed in thoughts of Krishna. The vivid example is always present in the behavior of the gopis. Therefore, Lord Chaitanya declared that no one can worship the Supreme Lord by any method which is better than the method of the gopis. So, that is the meaning of this. Bodhyanta huh? Parasparam. You see? Mutually, they are discussing about Krishna's pastimes. 
Actually, the more this becomes our contemplation, then you can be, your body may be in the material world, but your heart, your consciousness is in spiritual world. Mm -hmm. So, if uh, if somebody says, Prabhuji, I come, I don't come from a good background, uh, I had so many nasty uh, habits before, now I, my mind is not absorbing so much in this, that means you need to take a truckload of absorption. You need to increase your reading, hearing. Uh, truckload, practically. Like you say, I went for two years study right now. Morning, we used to have 10 to 1, we would attend the class. One chapter of Bhagavatam. Afternoon, 3 to 6, revision. How many hours? Six hours, three hours study, three hours revise, and next day morning test. Yeah. So, and every day we would memorize five verses and write. Five shlokas, every day memorized. Next day you would write. Again that day, after writing the test, immediately 10 to 1. One more chapter, Bhagavatam. Bhagavatam was 334 chapters, you know, for the Bhakti Baba we study. So, in this way, imagine six hours if a person is taking in, why will you not get absorption, correct? Huh? Huh? So, you have to take, if somebody has a very good sanskara from the past, huh? then even one line you hear from Bhagavatam, you know, you, you keep on ringing in your mind. Huh? We won't be like that hard gulab jamun. Huh? We can be like that soft gulab jamun. If our mind is like a hard gulab jamun, then we will have to, our taking in has to increase, surely. Huh? Then even if it means that you have to reduce your preaching, there is no problem. Preaching to the world is secondary. Absorbing our consciousness in Krishna is primary. Why? Because if you are not, I am not saying that you become a big scholar. Huh? Read Acharya's commentary, go read, read Sandarbhas. Huh? People are reading. So even after reading Sandarbha, you may not get any absorptions. Because you may be reading from an intellectual point of view. Useless. Huh? Such kinds of reading. Actually, any, therefore you will find Prabhupada disciples are just reading Prabhupada's purports. Uh, they just read and explain. And they are fully absorbed, many of them. Their consciousness absorbed, they are thrilled, they are feeling ecstasy. They have achieved the goal of life. Huh? On the other hand, there are many Indian Panditas. Uh, they may be big, big Sanskrit scholars, they may be reading any Purana, you name it, they can tell you from that. Huh? But there is no substance. Bhakti is not there. That is useless. Therefore, don't mistake me or misunderstand me that I am saying that you have to read a lot and become a scholar. Becoming a scholar is not the goal of a devotee. Hmm? The goal of a devotee is what gopis are doing. Hmm? You, your reading, your lifestyle should be uh, managed in such a way that it leads you to constant remembrance of Krishna. Hmm? If that is not happening, there is some serious problem. Hmm? If we have over a period of time, uh, Krishna becomes everything for us. Hmm? Other than Krishna, everything else is secondary. Hmm? My primary, this man I told you, he married also, he has three children also, but that is not his primary thing. Now, even now, you, you know, he wakes up in the morning, he does Mangalati, Narsangati, Tulsi Arati, his wife also is doing Arati and everything. She is arranging the things in the halter, they are putting up a program in their house, children are all wearing Tila, Kantimala, all are chanting, dancing. There is one fellow in our temple called Mani Rajimai Prabhu in Pune. He has a watch shop. Hmm? Once he called me to his watch shop, I had gone. In the entrance, when you go, big display of Bhagavad Gita in all different languages. Hmm? And any time you go to his shop, he has got four, three, four hundred Bhagavad Gita's with him, ready. For every customer, when he sells one watch, he will give one Bhagavad Gita to them. And he sells uh, practically thousand Gita's every month, you will see that. He will keep on distributing uh, books like that. And also those who take Bhagavad Gita reverentially, he notes their name and calls them for a program in his house. He himself gives class. And he and his wife, they they conduct programs, they call Sarva Lakshan Prabhu once a month, they call. Huh? Or something like that. Other time, he himself gives classes. And very enthusiastic, he takes him for Yatra also. He gives classes. And when he meets me in the temple in Mangalarati, many times he would come running to tell me that, Babaji, yesterday one fellow wanted 200 uh, Gita's box. <laughs> I sent here, I sent there, you'll be telling. So, for him, you know, he's sitting in a watch ka dukan, huh? he's selling. For him, the sale of watches and everything that happens, you know, whatever has to happen, it happens. That's not his main thing. He is doing business, but his mati is fully in Krishna, you see. So, therefore, now it is immaterial whether you are a grihastha, you are a brahmachari, you are a woman, or a man, or a child, whatever. So, I, there was a little girl in the congregation, and the father was giving her every day two, two rupees. She had a piggy bank. When she collected, it was overflowing. So, father asked, Beta, what do you want to do with this money? You want to get a frock for you? We will get a beautiful gown. 
If you want, I'll take you to the shop. She said, no, 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 I want to give it to the cows. She said, for go seva. Why? Why you want to give to go seva? Oh, cows are very dear to Krishna. Hmm? So if I give to cows, then who will be pleased? She is a little girl. Huh? Little girl, see the consciousness. She admits by this, she will go back to Godhead. Correct, no? She is remembering the Lord. So, <clears throat> therefore, Lord is saying, my thoughts of my pure devotees dwell in me. Their lives are fully devoted to my service. Hmm? Their thoughts are dwelling in Krishna and their services are for Krishna. And how do they derive great satisfaction? Like gopis are sitting together and then talking about Krishna. Like many of you have study circles in Prabhupada books, correct, no? You know, one most important thing I'll tell you, you may complete the number of pages to be completed, but are you inspired by it? That's very important. In, in Hyderabad, for example, we have, they, have, they have been having two hours of book reading. Huh? So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then Thursday, Friday, they go to voice centers and all. So one devotee told me that, Prabhu, we, we are completing two hours of reading, but I am not inspired, he was telling. Immediately I told them, reduce it to one hour. I told them, it's useless to study two hours without any getting inspiration. Then you study one hour personally on your own, and one hour you read with others. The purpose of reading Prabhupada's purpose is to get inspired in spiritual life and to remember Krishna more and more. If your reading is not leading to that, then Shramayevahi Kevalam, he says. It is simply Shramayevahi Kevalam. You may say that Sadhana card 80-80, huh? but uh, Krishna consciousness is not developing. Then our Mati is fully hooked on material platform. Simply useless. So, and then it becomes mechanical reading. You know what is mechanical reading? You can do mechanical japa, mechanical reading, mechanical morning program, mechanical everything. But the only thing is when it comes to eating prasad, that's no more mechanical. Yeah. And uh, attraction to opposite sex, no more mechanical. You will put your heart. Huh? Huh? Attraction to job, money making, no more mechanical. Huh? So then what is the use of such a life? Huh? Then uh, what advancement are we making in spiritual life? Huh? So if you don't want that uh, something mechanical, then one has to first of all be very clear about the goal. Huh? You know, as soon as you sit in a car, in any Uber Ola, what is the first thing they ask you? Ah, destination. If you tell him, I have to decide nahi kya. Aap aise chalate jao. You just keep driving the car. Thoda soch kar bataunga. Can you do that? Huh? Similarly, after taking to Krishna consciousness, if you say, Prabhupada, I am not very confident about this. I am not very confident about spiritual life. Then where are you going then? <laughs> you are sitting in the bodily car and you don't know where are you going. Huh? If Be clear, are you soul or body? Huh? If you know you are the soul and your destination is back to Godhead, then why have any ambiguity? Hmm. See, this is one thing in IIT also is uh, in abroad also. If a boy wants to do Krishna consciousness, uh, you don't have to follow him up at all. Hmm. Once he came for the program, and one boy came and asked, you know, when does the program happen? I liked it, he said. Every Saturday. No, no, I can't come every Saturday. I can come one Saturday in a month. Tell me which Saturday is good. You know, I said, every Saturday is like this. Okay. I would like to come first Saturday of every month. And then he came for first Saturday. And I found in three months he finished the whole Gita reading on his own. And when he came for one Saturday, he brought so many questions. What about this? What about that? So Saturday, whole day he took off. Morning attended the program and afternoon, another three, four hours. I said, hey, you have to go for studying and all. He said, studying and all will do. I'll take care. <clears throat> but I need to get the answer to these questions. So, you will see that one thing I observed is, when they want to do something, they will just get into it. Mm-hmm. And if they don't want to do, they'll clearly tell you, not interested, by uh, no problem. Mm-hmm. You carry on, you like it, you do it, bye-bye. Mm-hmm. They will tell you. But many times we say, I am interested, we come, we do everything looking like a devotee, but we don't bring our heart. Huh? Then what kind of, that's why, that's why spiritual life becomes mechanical. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I can tell you, for me, other than Krishna consciousness, I don't see any meaning in this world. Honestly, I can tell you from the heart. Nothing makes any sense to me in this world. If I am living, it is because there is Krishna consciousness here. If you tell me this material world minus Krishna consciousness, I'll die. And I don't find any meaning in this world at all. And, and the more I researched into the spirituality and ultimately came to this conclusion. But prior to that, I was a, I was a seeker. But over a period of time, after seeking, 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 I got the correct answers. And I firmly believe in Prabhupada's purports. I don't doubt it. Prabhupada saying, Krishna is the source of everything. Huh? Then I accept it. Huh? And also there are many evidences which support it. Hmm. Prabhupada is not just saying it. So, if you are not going to be serious, 
you may be wearing dhoti kurta wearing tell like, go to company and watching all dirty nude women in the computer huh? then what kind of devotee are you are a cheater huh? when when i asked my spiritual master once mara some devotees are also watching pornography and they are also wearing tilak like, and kanti mala dhoti kurta you know uh, and one devotee was justifying he said uh, what is wrong if you take one or two extra gulab jamuns huh? like that if you watch a little porn what is the problem he saying like that maharaj one boy i asked what do you say maharaj said what watching pornography is not eating one or two extra gulab jamuns it is eating cow flesh he said huh? There was a pin drop silence. It was a Bhagavatam class in Chaupari Temple. Mm-hmm. Many devotees were trembling after hearing that. Watching, and he said, he is watching his own mother nude on the screen. Maharaj said, huh? if you are watching any woman nude on the screen, you are looking at your own mother naked. You want to see like that? Will you do that? Because every woman is your mother, except your wife. Every mother, woman is your mother. And he is thinking he is eating two eggs. Maharaj was very angry actually when he heard this. So because... those who are great souls like maharaj for example you know they actually are very clear about this huh? so i asked the question many of them after the lecture was over maharaj went people surrounded me said thank you thank you for asking this question we are going to hear the recording again huh? they were saying because we take you know guru's words krishna's words very casually huh? you take casually you don't make any progress and that is why years may pass our progress may be limited and the absorption doesn't come is like a, a rocky gulab jamun huh? it doesn't sink in huh? but when can it become like a soft gulab jamun which is absorbing the liquid and very juicy and delicious and tasty for that you have to give your heart to krishna krishna says you keep all other nonsense with you. you you give me only your heart and what we are saying take everything except my heart <laughs> my heart is for it company my heart is for money making my heart is for opposite sex my heart is for enjoying life and then you are saying take my morning program you know you whatever you say you know take this take that we give everything other than the heart we want to keep our heart person's gratification then you will be cheated because you cheat krishna you get cheated also back dutam chalaya tamasmi he says you are cheating me except the heart you are giving everything else so therefore uh, before we give our heart we are giving our time huh? like we are coming in the morning program together staying together by chanting madhuri mangala arti narsingha arti tulsi arti you know and one has to actually cultivate knowledge huh? knowledge is very important if you don't cultivate the knowledge systematically then you are doing it uh, superficially mechanically without knowledge that will be very boring huh? cultivate knowledge about every personality in the altar huh? about radha and krishna about gaur nitai about acharyas study books about them because the more you know about them the more you will be happy to worship them hmm. who are the heroes whom you worship in your life huh? you know are the hollywood bollywood heroes your uh, heroes hmm. are the top notch scientists your heroes hmm. are the business lords your heroes hmm. are the krishna and uh, acharyas are your hero huh? so you have to decide uh, who are your role models who are your heroes huh? anybody who is charmed by the acharya's commitment and surrender and dedication to krishna like madhavendra puri or paksandra thakur or shila prabhupad or spiritual masters then naturally your heart will run towards krishna if they are your heroes i have seen there are sometimes the teenage kids they come to temple they may do kirtan and everything like that but they have a secretly another life where they are also watching ipl you know they are also watching some bollywood songs and movies like that just simply cheating <laughs> it's called as passing stool inside the pant <laughs> you know you may do it eventually smell will come out <laughs> this is just duplicity cheating cheating life <laughs> it is not true life if you really are serious devotee then you know this is right thing and that is nonsense you have to know the difference between the two hmm? what is right what is wrong <laughs> all the bollywood hollywood heroes we have already shown how their bodies change eventually correct now in our devices we showed and then they become old they become they get white hair the tooth are gone and one day they are finished and they go they all become zeros then why do you take them as a hero one one thing is you ask questions and then once you get a, a clear answer then you stick to the answer then why are you again and again running there the nonsense again and again huh? so therefore krishna says uh, the thoughts of my pure devotees dwell in me hmm? the lives are fully devoted to my service and they derive great satisfaction and bliss by always enlightening one the gopis are enlightening one another they are conversing about krishna tesham satata yuktanam satata yuktanam bhajatam priti purvakam bhajatam priti purvakam 
ददा बुद्धि तमुपयांति See, first two verses, verses Krishna speaks about about what my devotees do to me, and the next two verses, he talks about what I do for my devotees. Yeah, read that. To those, to those who are constantly devoted to serving me with love, I give the understanding by which they can come to me. Just see, huh? how does the understanding come? Because two words are used: satata yuktana. You have to always engage in Krishna consciousness. Rupa said, "What is the meaning of that satata?" He said. Say you are going from one place to another. You don't waste your time. Take out a proper book and read, or hear some recording, like that. Huh? Anything you are doing, like today I I took oil bath in the morning. Huh? So it takes like forty five minutes to one hour. Huh? I finished three four lectures of proper bath. Huh? Mm-hmm. I just put down the lecture. Proper bath lecture is going on. Nicely apply oil. You take care of the body also, soul also. Both <laughs> both are getting nourishment. Correct? No? So you can shave. Everything you can very coolly do. You have time. Huh? You can do that. So four short lectures got over. So in this way, you can. That's what he is saying. That if you are constantly making an effort to understand him, you have to understand him. There is no possibility of you not understanding, because he gives understanding. It is not by our intellectual prowess we understand. How we understand? He says, "The dhami buddhi yogantam." I will give them the buddhi for to understand me. And if you understand him, you will become affectionate to him. properly if you understand because some people think krishna is my competitor huh? they think hey he is enjoying one by asked prabhu ji you always say krishna will enjoy we have to so why can't i enjoy you know that means understanding is not there are you are a part he is the whole huh? and by serving him you know you also benefit like hand is taking laddu and putting in the belly hand also gets nourishment hmm? but hand is not going to get nourishment by Massaging the laddu, huh? you know. No, no, no. I will not give to belly. I will only enjoy. You can't enjoy. You are a part. Part has to serve the whole. So by that, you get enjoyment also hmm? by serving the whole. And not only that, when one serves the whole, then Lord also serves the reward. He's like he becomes part of Sarathi. He becomes Yashoda Dulal. He becomes Damodar bound by Yashoda. Hmm? So unnecessarily, somebody doesn't have proper understanding. They hear about Krishna and become envious of Krishna. You see. नाशयात्मस्थो ज्ञानदीपेन भास्वता To show them special mercy, I, dwelling in their hearts, destroy with the shining lamp of knowledge the darkness born of ignorance. Ah. So, Prabha says that sometimes a devotee is illiterate, like that boy was born in a slum, not very educated, very simple. So, for such people, what Lord says, I dwelling a super soul in their hearts, I give the same knowledge which is in the books. That knowledge I give them in their heart. He says, I do this service for my devotees, like I lit up the lamp of knowledge. Therefore, how many of you have seen people? Who are illiterate or angota chap, but having great devotion to Lord, you have seen that, correct, na? And how they dance? Like I used to go to Nigidi with our boys in those days. Huh? The Nigidi devotees used to, used to dance and sing and and uh, worship the deities with so much devotion. Huh? They are all from villages, not very educated, They're very simple people, mm-hmm. but they had so much devotion. So you will see that the devotion doesn't have to necessarily be sprouting from your scholarship. Huh? Many scholars are armchair speculators. Huh? They don't want to serve the Lord. Huh? On the other hand, you find devotees are those who have the propensity for serving the Lord. The Lord gives them knowledge inside their heart. Huh? He says, "So, hmm. what is needed? Association of devotees and bona fide spiritual master. Hmm. Who is this? South Indian Brahman." Correct, na? No? Yeah. Only qualification. Purpose is one always engages in Krishna consciousness and enters service with love and devotion. If you have a bona fide guru, ah, uh, and maybe attach a spiritual organization, if he is sincere, even if not intelligent, Krishna from within gives him instructions to understand. Yeah. Qualification is sincerity and devotion, not intelligence. Like the purpose says. See here, read read the question. 
but how is it but how is it possible for them to grasp you who are infinite in form qualities and powers just to the teachings of a guru hmm. continue hmm. answer for those who desire constant association with me satata yukta naam who worship me with pleasure understanding me as i really am preeti purvakam i relishing their devotion to me offer to them intelligence such that they can understand worship and attain me with my infinite qualities and powers buddhi yogam by which they can attain me i give them the buddhi by which they can understand he says see this who is this yeah i come ah, see who is this dhruva dhruva maharaj resuniti and then narada and then tar gives him darshan huh? because of his sincerity dhruva got this such a beautiful picture na huh? dhruva was shining the heart so how sweet lord looks you see huh? with his four hands is coming and giving darshan so he is a five year old child he never had akshara abhyas also huh? he never went to gurukul also but he saw darshan of the lord see faithfully followed narada hmm. who is this pralaj pastan nadamani saving kayadu and then giving instructing her and then pralaj went on to become a great soul simply by hearing from narada while he was in the womb pralaj became a great preacher later just by hearing that's it huh? and he made all the sons of the demons dance in kirtan <coughs> see this is um, so um So without functioning or not, okay. In this way, when he's chanting the holy name, the heart gets purified. <laughs> Initially, demons you saw that, yeah. And as one keeps chanting, chanting, what happens? See, Lord lights up the heart light like knowledge in the heart. Huh? And now the reward is enlightened. Now, huh? one gets to see the Lord's form. Nice, no? <laughs> Read that. we can get rid of the impurities of the heart by turning our consciousness towards lord krishna with mind we can think of krishna and project our consciousness towards him yeah yeah when we turn towards krishna actually krishna our movement is called krishna bhavana amrit so the bhavana is very important and the sadhana is supposed to bring bhavana yeah. otherwise sadhana doesn't bring bhavana it just like for example try to picture this in your mind the example i'm telling you say so you have a vessel in which you have kept a rocky ice huh? big ice cube you have kept <clears throat> you put fire at the bottom if the fire is very mild the ice will remain rocky it is not going to melt maybe little 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 melt in the corner it's not going to melt but if you intensify the fire what happens ah oh, the whole ice cube will turn into water a very little bit chill water still but you keep putting intense fire continuously Huh? then what happens then the water will start giving out bubbles correct no and if you still don't leave it huh? not only you are continuously putting it, it is focused it is intense and for a prolonged period of time when you put what happens then it becomes that's called absorption mm-hmm. right now our heart is like ice now very hard no? so you not only should practice devotion service intensely it should be in a then in a focused manner and for a prolonged period of time hmm? then it melts the heart and creates absorption huh? uh, as soon as there is an opportunity one should turn to krishna consciousness hmm? hearing chanting sing some vaishnava song huh? boliya tomare samsare asiya peye nana vidhavya tha the beauty of the songs is it can be easily related in our life huh? you can uh, what i did i have a song book with me in my bag this song book is a song of my favorite songs mm-hmm. i took like 50 to 100 songs one of the songs which i like very much i have removed them and all and put them in a, a spiral bound and i kept it with me so while going in the train here there i just uh, take those songs my goal is to memorize all of them eventually some of them i have memorized already others keep singing so mem- what is the advantage in memorizing the song along with the knowledge of the meaning huh because when you sing immediately the meaning comes to the mind and your absorption will be greater correct no so shlokas also songs also both in this way we can easily convert our uh, you know information to into absorption huh? so when you hear them and the songs are very sweet also nice tunes 
Yeah. In this way, we can, with mind, we can think of Krishna and project our consciousness towards him. Mm-hmm. Right. Somebody says, without discriminating, one cannot have pure knowledge, people think. Huh. But Krishna, like the lamp or sun, he says, I give them knowledge in their heart. Hmm. See, in the top right corner, it is said, it's from... Hmm. If at the time of death, one can remember Krishna, one's life is successful, correct? No? But in uh, Varaha Puran, there is another statement. All of you repeat this. Yadi vatadi do, yadi vatadi doshena. Yadi doshena. Madbhakto maam na chasmaret. Madbhakto maam na chasmaret. Aham smarami madbhaktaha. Nayami paramam gatim. If my devotee is unable to remember me at the time of death because of disturbances felt within the body at that time, then I shall remember my devotee and take him back back to the supreme abode. Varapura. Who, who's supreme abode? Krishna supreme abode. What he says to? My supreme ah, abode. My supreme So he says to my supreme abode I take. Varapura and Lord says that. See, this old man is definitely not in a good shape. Hmm? But because he has done devotion service all his life, then Lord says, I will take back. Mm-hmm. Isn't it? Yeah. Read the heart of a conditioned living entity. What's happening? Heart of a conditioned living entity. Mm-hmm. Covered with dust of materialism since millions of births. Mm-hmm. Clean by chanting and devotional service. And not by mental speculation or argument. But what about the material necessities of life? When darkness is removed and Lord is pleased, everything is automatically provided by the Lord. Mm-hmm. Like I told you that uh, boy from the slum. Huh? You know, he didn't worry too much about material life. Huh? He came to the temple, met the devotees. Actually, if you come in contact with the Krishna conscious devotees, everything in your life improves. Huh? Like, for example, we all wear a fresh dress every day. But before meeting devotees, if you remember, most of the boys, they put the shirt in the hanger. Huh? And they wear it dozen times till the shirt stinks. <laughs> Correct, no? And some boys wear the jeans, uh, so six months to one year, they don't wash it. Correct, no? Uh, but how, uh, when you, that means when you become a devotee, you wear fresh dress, you see. Similar to the type of food you eat now, pure food. Huh? Not only it's pure food, it is sanctified food. Offered to Krishna and such a hygienic, huh? pure prasad. Similarly, our culture of dealing with other human beings is also improved tremendously. How, uh, in what circle we were living in the college and when you become a devotee, you live in another type of circle of cultured people who have mutual respect for each other. Huh? Yeah. And also your uh, habits like sleeping early, rising early, keeps your body healthy also. Huh? Otherwise, you know, people sleep at 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock. Is it not true? Huh? So ruining that uh, health. Huh? So you can see that materially, spiritually, Krishna consciousness takes a person up. Huh? You can see that. Uh, read that. Uh, what do you say? Hey, I, I situated with attachment for that soul, Atma Bhavastaha. Like a bee in the lotus flower, reveal in the Atma by dazzling form and qualities and destroy darkness in the form of desires for object other than myself born from ignorance in the form of beginningless karma which covers knowledge, Agyana Jamtamaha, by means of glowing lamp of knowledge concerning my form and qualities, Jnana Deepena Bhaswataha. Very, very powerful. What he is comparing it, see one, one thing you should see. First, darkness means, what is the darkness he is saying? Beginningless karma which covers knowledge. Actually, for millions of lives, we have been covered by karmic reactions. And that is called as darkness. So, Lord dissipates the darkness. And what is the lamp? The lamp is the Lord's form, Nam Rupa Leela. That is compared to the uh, lamp. And then what does the Lord reveal? His dazzling form and qualities and, and destroys the darkness. And what is the darkness? Uh, the darkness is the disease for objects other than myself, born from ignorance. And the ignorance is due to karmic reactions. Eh? That means uh, all other desires they go away, far away. The only desire to attain Krishna remains. Eh? Like that the Lord does. Yeah. See the little child, eh? little girl, she's having a little Krishna. She has dressed, decorated, she's dressing like a gopi. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, the Lord gives that, uh, how this child is inspired to do this? Because Lord in the heart is, Inspiring. So I had another picture. One uh, day in uh, Pandarpur, they sell this Vital Rakumai, you know, that like a mold type of thing. It's made of, I think, probably 
paper measure or something, you know, Vital Rakumai. So one fellow was selling Vital Rakumai. He had kept one Vital Rakumai open in the front and started raining. One boy going with the father, he came running with the umbrella and started holding umbrella for Vital. Papa, see, Vital is getting wet. <laughs> so he very innocently he offered, uh, but definitely Lord Vital will accept it because it is done with bhava, correct? No? Yeah. Who is this? Shritadev. Welcoming Krishna, Vedavyas, Narada, Shukadeva. Mm. All great sages are coming. He's ecstatic, huh? like a peacock dancing. Mm. Who is this? Pratishthanapur Brahman, who cooked sweet rice and put his finger to check. Mm. And then uh, he felt it burning. Huh? Lord gives special mercy uh, to the devotees, yeah. In this way, having the intention of giving them mercy by all means, even without them having to worry about attaining my mercy, I myself make the endeavor to give them mercy. Krishna says, I will come on my own uh, in their life. This is Bilumangal Thakur. See, Surdas, <coughs> Lord is escorting him. Uh -huh. Who is this? Yeah. See, I carry the responsibility of their spiritual and material welfare. Correct, no? My devotee need not be anxious. The Lord came and gave him milk. Correct, no? Part of milk. Lord, Lord takes charge. Yeah. It's the essence of all topics, Chakrata Thakur says. Mm -hmm. See, attacking gain. This is about the Bharat Maharaj when he became dear. Still, Lord gave him the remembrance from the previous life. Hmm. Yeah. Special concession is even though he attained non-human body, he got the remembrance of the Lord and he became perfect in that life. Hmm. Shri Prabhupada ki. Yeah. So the whole talk was what today? Hmm. That uh, three things we discussed today. One is the Narada boy was mechanically trying to do the practice and uh, see the Lord. Lord told him that Avipakvakshayanam uh, Durda Shoham Kuyogina. If you are not complete in your seva, and if your heart is not fully purified, you can't see me. So all your life you wait. In this life, next life you'll be a pure devotee. That one. So patiently he practiced all his life. So similarly, we also have to increase our services, and we also have to increase our purification of heart. These two things the Lord said. Uh, that was one thing we saw. And mechanically making an effort will not work, because bhakti path is not mechanical. Second thing I showed you is remembrance of the gopis. Huh? So gopis, uh, Leela Smaranam, huh? how they increase their bhava for Krishna. By, actually, before we can increase our bhava for Krishna directly, we have to, there is iron weight, gold weight, we call it. Iron weight means study about Ishwara, Jiva, Prakriti, Kala, Karma. So all of you should do Bhakti Shastri. Now we have started going on. All the, the, the final year devotees? Working. working devotees. Working devotees, yeah. So, those four books of Prabhupada, study them very deeply, thoroughly. So, that will lay you the very good foundation and then you further reading of... So, the iron weight is the philosophy and the gold weight are the leelas. Huh? The leelas will make a lot of sense once you are developing firm faith in the philosophy. Then only leelas are effective. Otherwise, leelas will... You know, you will take it like little Krishna children watch. It will be like that. You won't have, it won't have any effect. On the other hand, with... Uh, Solid faith in Krishna, you watch even little Krishna also, it will have a big impact on you. <laughs> because the faith is there. Without faith, knowing is one thing, faith is another thing. Hmm? So therefore, we are talking about the Lila Svanam of the gopis. Huh? And then we saw the Chachish Loki, Bhagavad Gita, where what devotees do and what Lord does. So these are all very extraordinary things, amazing things which can... Uh, one, one thing I could not speak today, which you can do, you can find out... Uh, the material outlook is Asyatma Buddhir Kuna Peti Datuke, correct? No? I told you that was considering oneself to be the body and the relatives to be one so on. Another was also the Arche Vishnu Shiladir, Guru Shu Naramatir, Vaishnavi Jati Buddhi. Huh? Vishnu Arva, Vaishnava Nam, Kalimala Matane, Padati Temba Buddhi, Sri Vishnu Namni Sakala Kalushe Pa, Shabde Samanya Buddhi. Huh? Uh, Sri Vishnu Taditara Samadhir Yasava Naraki Saha. This is a very, very important verse. He says, one should not consider the picture or the deity form of Krishna to be ordinary. 
అర్చే విష్ణు శిలాదేవి గురుషు నరమతే వన్ షుడ్ నాట్ థింక్ ఆఫ్ గురు టు బి ఆర్డినరీ మ్యాన్ సమ్ టైమ్స్ ద సన్యాసి ఆర్ అ గురు మైట్ హ్యావ్ ఫాలన్ ఆర్ డివియేటెడ్ ఆర్ సంథింగ్ లైక్ దట్ అండ్ ఇస్ కాన్ దే విల్ నాట్ అలౌ దమ్ టు ఇనిషియేట్ ఆఫ్టర్ దాట్ దర్ ఇస్ వెరీ స్ట్రిక్ట్ రూల్ ఇఫ్ సంబడి హ్యాస్ గాన్ ఆస్ట్రే ఆర్ సంథింగ్ లైక్ దాట్ so one boy wrote to me saying that how is it that you know, guru can deviate and still they accept i don't have trust in any guru and making sweeping remarks we become great offenders huh? because iskan is a very serious society uh, they give a position or a role for somebody if they don't fit the role then there will be some uh, disciplinary action for that hmm? so one should have one should understand the glory of the gurus and vaishnavas hmm? guru sho and then uh, vaishnava jati but one should not see vaishnava as uh, low caste or high caste and all you can't say you are born in islam you can't say that now he is a vaishnava now huh? he has become exalted now hmm? better than a brahmana now hmm? uh, vaishnava jati but the vishnu or vaishnava nam kalimala matane pad uh, their foot wash which is charanamrit washing the feet of uh, Gu, uh, you know, vaishnavas and krishna that should be drunk with a pure consciousness that this is going to purify me just like uh, prithu maharaj says just as krishna's lotus feet purifies i mean made the uh, viraja waters into ganga huh? like that if you take krishna's lotus feet in my heart my heart also will become purified he says so one should take the foot wash of the lord with great reverence huh? not drink glasses of charanamrit huh? if you drink five five glasses you will not have that reverence even if they bring you a few glasses you just ask them to give you a little bit and meditate and then you drink it hmm? and then distribute the rest of charanamrit to other needy souls there are so many souls in this world give it to others huh? so and then uh, krishna's words i mean uh, holy name should not be considered as ordinary sound vibration the holy name is, is divine and uh, calling the holy name is as good as calling krishna himself because krishna appears when you call the holy name draupadi gajendra ajamela they are called hmm? respect the holy name adara kintu adara anudinam kalasai vajushta and then finally he says considering krishna to be in par with other demigods thinking that all the demigods are coming from some impersonal brahman that's a wrong notion the offensive notion krishna is the original and all other uh, expansions of krishna come from him there is vishnu tattva there is shiva tattva there is uh, jiva tattva there is shakti tattva one should know these things properly so develop a tattva understanding first very clearly hmm? and then read the leelas and uh, take in more of these things in order to make this wisdom sink in our heart mm-hmm. and then by that the absorption will increase and the mechanical approach will be reduced uh, over a period of time uh, actually the ritual uh, spirit plus ritual is spirit. spiritual but when you remove the spirit what happens mm-hmm. and that is mechanical only ritual is very mechanical very painful it is uh, and you will think oh today i have to chant in the morning oh today i have to you know it's like a punishment one boy asked me uh, prabhu i like your center very much the reading room is very wonderful prasadam is very wonderful can i stay here and use the study room for studying and take prasadam and go to college i can skip all the morning programs <laughs> then i said then what is the use of your joining here correct na so and uh, many people don't understand why we have this center this the goal of this spiritual center is to help the jeevas go back home back to godhead huh? <coughs> that won't happen without spiritual practice correct no the jeeva only want to selectively take some educations huh? and krishna can't he want to leave it off hmm? so therefore we talked about what is mechanical and what is absorbing i will i am sure you will not forget the gulab jamun example huh? <coughs> and another example like gave a putting fire under the eyes correct now remember these examples and um, make sure that you were uh, uh, cheshtas you make endeavors you make with body mind and words are productive and they are heading you towards increasing your remembrance of the lord mantra mm-hmm. shrimad bhagavatam ki shela prabhupad ki aur bhakta vrinda ki jai shri nanbri Mm-hmm. Yes, probably. One question here, one question there. Yes. Uh, in that purport, it is mentioned that the right opportune moment will come. We just have to go on and discharging our duties. Yeah. So sometimes... And while discharging duties, we should make effort to bring our mind also. Yato yato nishtalati manas chanchala mastiram tata stato niyam yeta tatmani yeva vasham na yeta. And that is a little painful thing, struggle something. We have to do it. 
But if you, we are not saying that you just do the external rituals and bhakti, no, Krishna will manifest. No, you have to, therefore, yathantascha, with great determination, you have to uh, give up your sleep in early in the morning and rise, both physically and mentally, one has to make effort. Huh? By, but that effort is pleasing to the Lord. You heard the story, Prabhupada says, of that sparrow who lost her eggs. Hmm. So when she was thinking that I will take a few drops in my chonch, in my beak, and put it far away and come, anybody would look at the sparrow, they will laugh at it. Hey, are you really going to... Even your friends will say that, hey, the Maya, nobody can get over. People say like that. Yeah, it is true only. They are not saying wrong. Maya, we cannot get over. But our endeavor is pleasing to the Lord. When Lord sees that we are struggling, you know, trying to overcome Maya and try to surrender to Him, we are crying, my Lord, please take care of me. I mean, uplift me. When Lord is pleased, then He says, I will come and deliver you. Correct, no? Because we only have to, Prabhupada says one place, one devotee was telling, Prabhupada, I am going to do this, I am going to do Prabhupada said, wait a minute, you can't do anything for Krishna. He said, really? <laughs> then Prabhupada said, what is your contribution to Krishna who is having millions of universes? But you can do one thing. You make sure that you don't waste your time in the 24 hours. As soon as you have some time, you do something for Krishna. All your life, you showed Krishna that, Krishna, I did not uh, unnecessarily chase after sense gratification. I gave my life to you. Whatever I could do, I, I did it. Hmm. Until my last breath. My body, my mind, my words, I engaged it in your service. Although the world may not see that you have done anything big. But Lord is convinced that you didn't waste your time. Satatam. You are adapt Satam principle. Then you can go back to Godhead. Once my special master was saying in a Bhagavatam lecture, many times devotees become very technical in talking about you are in Nishta stage or Ruchi stage, Asakti stage, or Bhava, or Prema. Maharaj said, you don't have to worry too much. You just make sure you give all your time to Krishna. You know, body, mind, words. And then Lord ultimately sees your sincerity and He can adjust the material energy in such a way He can take you back to Godhead. So, this, whose problem? Krishna's problem. You do your part and He will take care. You don't have to worry. Hmm? Like the squirrel. You know, He never considered how big is the Setu Bandha I have to make. You know, do you think the squirrel alone can make Setu Bandha? But he only focused on one thing. This is my capacity and I am going to do it. He put his full capacity and he became noticed by whom? That is the point. So are we engaging in Krishna consciousness to our best capacity? That's the only thing. Otherwise, you know, where is the question of squirrel making Setuban? <laughs> it would be ridiculous, isn't it? <laughs> it's a humanly impossible, it is. Hmm? All right? Yes, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, bhakti is done by the devotee himself and it is helpful for him only. Okay? Correct. And uh, if the other person gets the benefit of the bhakti of the this devotee, mm. so in this uh, example of this uh, Kalyanag, mm. you are told that ki wives are bhakta, bhakti oh. done and it is useful to the Kalyanag. There is the reason the for dear. that. Huh. There is the reason. What is the reason? Lord is particularly interested to help those who are dear to devotees. For example, Srivas Thakur's house, they were cleaning and washing. There was one old lady called Duki. She was bringing water pots. So Lord Chaitanya said, because you are serving in Srivas' house, I bestow love of God upon you. Today onwards you will be called as? Suki, he said. <clears throat> Lord also delivered one Muslim tailor also in the house of Srivas. He gave him love of God. Huh? And also Srivas' niece, her name was Narayani. Lord Chaitanya ate prasad and from his own divine hands he gave the child, uh, little Narayani, he gave her his Mahaprasad and after eating it, she became erupted with ecstasy. And uh, she became the mother of, uh, later on, our uh, Vrindavan Das Thakur. You know? So, in the same manner, if somebody is related to a devotee, uh, either uh, Bandhu Bandhav, which means blood relationship, or if a devotee is, uh, if a man is related to a devotee, uh, like uh, Nalakur Manigri were connected to Narada. Uh, so, Lord remembered Narada said that I have to deliver them, so he delivered. So, if a devotee requests the Lord, please deliver this soul, then Lord will take it seriously. So, therefore, all of us, it's, it's in our interest that we connect with devotees and become Kripa Patra of devotees. Even if not devotee, even... Uh, even if they are not devotees, Lord will provide uh, such a support for that fellow, he will become a devotee. Like Amoga. He was actually offending Lord Chaitanya. 
But Lord thought that he is the son-in-law of who? Samatacharya. Therefore, he touched his chest and said, Amogha, why do you allow envy to reside in this place? This is place for Krishna to reside. And Amogha immediately transformed. He started beating and slapping on his cheeks and saying, Alas, alas, I am a great offender. He repented and then he became a great devotee. All right? Thank you. Shri Prabhupada ki. Gaur Bhakta Vindha ki.